So anyway, I'll repeat it for the benefit of the audience that uh, here the small control property and the continuity of the control and at origin are connected by an if and only if relationship, which means that if the control is not continuous, you don't have small control property. If you don't have small control property, the control is not continuous at the origin. Okay, so it works both ways, every way. In fact, yes, that's the power of an if and only if result. All right. Anyway, so the key thing is you now have a formula for a universal controller which will work. I mean, it may look like a funny looking formula, uh, but it works. Okay, it gives you a stabilizing controller. It is smooth everywhere, but at the origin where it is continuous. Okay, still pretty good, I would say. Hmm? Now, before going to the rest of the piece of the proof, which is now a little bit more mathematical, and it really just talks about. Uh, you know the fact that the controller that we've prescribed is uh, smooth. Okay, so that's really what we uh, will prove. But before we do that, I want to look at this example. Okay, and the fact that there are multiple controllers possible and so on and so forth. Okay, so if uh, very simple example, all right, very simple scalar example. X dot is minus x cube plus u. Okay, this is the system that we are looking at. Now, one obvious control without doing any analysis or anything is to simply prescribe my control as this x cube minus x. Okay. All right. Then uh, you can see that your closed loop system is x dot is minus x. So, this is basically what you would call a feedback linearizing control. Now, we have not looked at feedback linearization, but basically what this control is doing is linearizing the system in a sense. Yeah, so, this is what this control does. Yeah. When you look at feedback linearization, this is the kind of controls you will design. You will cancel, you will try your best to cancel the nonlinearity and then introduce a nice linear term. In this case, you got a linear exponentially decaying system. Okay. One thing that is obvious is if your when x is large, control is large. Yeah. That should be obvious, right, because of the x cube term which will dominate. All right. If x is small, control is small. Yeah, seems intuitive also. Large, very far away from the origin, large control. Close to the origin, small control. Okay. Seems intuitive. Now let's do what we call typically call Lyapunov redesign. Hmm? We we don't design a control first like we did here, which is sort of a feedback linearization based control. We just we choose a Lyapunov function first for the system. In fact, what we choose is a control Lyapunov function, but I do not say it like that. It is let us say it is a Lyapunov function. I know it is a candidate Lyapunov function because it is continuous and uh, positive definite and all the nice things. Huh? So, this is a good function. So, I take v dot and I get this. Now, v dot obviously contains the control right? because I have not chosen it yet. Now, without going into any uh, CLF theory on our universal formula, I just use this and look at this to design a control. What will I do? I know that this two multiplied are not giving me anything bad. They are giving me a negative term. So, I do not try to cancel it. I do not try to cancel it. I just introduce a neg another negative term. Okay. So, my control is just u equal to minus x. So in fact, it is a linear controller. Okay. It is a linear controller. All right. Uh, so, I get v dot as minus x4 minus x squared, which is again negative definite. So, by Lyapunov theorem, I have asymptotic stability. Great. Done. What is the nature of this control? Again, large when x is large, small when x is small. However, important thing is it is not never going to be as large as this guy. All right. Never going to be as large as this guy. In fact, I have made a small computation also just for our reference. If I take x equal to 10, this one comes out to 990 magnitude. Magnitude is 990. Magnitude of this guy comes to be minus 10. Okay, this is positive 990. This is minus 10. When x is value of x is 10 units, whatever that unit is. Okay, all right. 
let's look at the universal formula okay universal controller we know that v equal to x squared by 2 is already a clf yeah why because uh, you can see that if the control term is zero if the control term goes away i just verified like this then i still have a negative term here yeah that's all clf means just this that if the control terms vanish or are zero then this uh, drift term is still negative which it is right what is the drift vector field in this case by the way if you if i ask you what is the drift vector field and what is the control vector field everything is a scalar field here but still what is the drift vector field in this case f0 what is f0 yes yeah, so you should be able to parse this that what is f0 what is f1 if you want to apply these results what is f0 you think and what is f1 for this system this right this, this is the system that we are looking at so there is of course just f0 and f1 and nothing more right because there's only one control number of control vector fields is same as the number of controls so there is only this much so what is f0 minus x cube what is f1 one one okay great so it's a clf because del v del x f0 is negative yeah when the other part is gone okay all right i will start the universal formula computation okay so i first compute ax which is what del v del x f0 x okay so what is del v del x it's x del v del x is just x times f0 x which is minus x cubed so ax is minus x to the power 4 what is b of x it is del v del x which is x again times f1 x which is just 1 okay so it is just x okay so it should anyway it should be evident that i mean although i checked i said it is uh, clf and all that it should be evident to you that if bx is 0 the only way bx can be 0 is if x is 0 okay and remember that we have to check all the clf conditions only for non zero x okay only for non zero x therefore i am saying that the condition 2 of the clf definition is trivially satisfied which means you can never get in a situation where your drift where the control vector fields do not contribute and x is non zero okay if your control vector fields do not contribute then x is zero that's the only possibility in this case so it's anyway trivially satisfied we don't have to check anything but it's okay in this case you also see that it is minus x4 is there which is a nice helping term all right so i use the universal controller okay i don't have to write this case because this means x is already at the equilibrium right so this case is irrelevant for us yeah because if bx is 0 x is 0 which means i am at the equilibrium so obviously i am not applying any control it is stupid to apply a control at the equilibrium okay right so i just compute this formula and what is that i have just populated the terms minus a plus a square root of a squared plus b4 and that's what it is a squared b4 and this whole thing multiplied by uh, b over norm b squared which is just what is b over norm b squared it is sorry this is b norm b squared is this the b is a scalar so norm of b is absolute value of b. okay so this is b over norm b squared okay so uh, so basically i have just you can just simplify it just comes out to this guy this is what is the control now hmm? this is what is the control it's x cubed minus x square root of x4 plus 1 notice that the expression for this control is significantly more complicated than both the other ones one is a linear control which is minus x other one is x cube minus x so simple expressions yeah this expression way more complicated but it is a very nice controller right better than the other ones why if x is large what happens 
this can be ignored this is playing a very small role so then this is x cubed this is almost zero for large x imagine for large value of state you are almost applying no control for small value of x what happens this is gone this is also gone you are left with minus x so for small value of control it behaves like this one like a linear controller for small values of x it behaves like the linear controller for large values of x it almost applies no control in fact you can compute i if you take x equal to 10 this is like 1000 minus 10 square root of 10 to the power 4 plus 1 this is almost zero yeah but it's evident anyway right because if i ignore the one both of these are x cubed okay so this is a very cool controller right because it's like it's applying very small control for large values of state okay now whenever i say things like this it's your job to tell me nothing comes for free okay nothing comes for free remember this uh, these controllers both these controllers in fact this guy gives you a x dot equals minus x this guy gives x dot is minus x cube minus x both of these are beyond exponential rate of convergence super exponential exponential or super exponential okay because x dot is minus x is already decaying at minus 1 t minus 1 rate exponential decay this is even faster than that okay so both of these are converging rather fast okay this guy there is no guarantee it's probably converging very slow okay it's not necessarily converging very fast so nothing is for free yeah we've designed controllers they are actually not that useless it's not like we did a very shoddy job no in fact more often than not we use this me sorry we use this method of control design directly guess it from the v dot expression rather than go to the universal formula all right uh, but yeah this is a nice control if you want to keep your control commands in check and you don't care about how fast you go especially there is a lot of um, applications when if the states are very large you don't care to apply very large control one of the most common application is spacecraft detumbling okay when a spacecraft is uh, uh, you have the launch vehicle right and multiple stages they get released then it leaves the earth's atmosphere then it says it gets close to the orbit then the spacecraft is released from the top okay when it's released uh, of course it goes into the orbit but it is it's rotating at a crazy rate very very large rates of rotation okay and remember in this case the states are angular position and angular rate okay angular position is whatever 0 to 360 can't be more than that but angular rates are super large and that's also a state of the system right so the states are very large in this case now for the detumbling maneuver if you start firing your engines like crazy to stop the detumbling okay then you have lost all your fuel in the first 10 minutes of your mission okay then what will you do after that yeah so they don't usually you know, folks don't care about uh, the equipments are well enough well protected enough that for large angular rates also the equipment is not going to get damaged this is important if your equipment is going to get damaged then you better detumble soon enough but if your equipment is well stacked and you've done a good enough design so it's not going to create a problem for you even if you're rotating fast all you want to do is make sure that it stops after say two days it's fine yeah so the detumbling maneuvers are really done with very small intensity jets very small or in fact a lot of times it's not even they try not to use jets so you find a lot of results on using magnetic torquers for detumbling so they use the earth because if it's a lower low earth orbit you can imagine there's a small magnetic field on the satellite and and uh, outside the earth's orbit outside the earth's atmosphere there is no real uh, atmosphere right to stop it so so even these small magnetic forces are enough to stop the satellite or or slow down the satellite so mostly your detumbling maneuvers will be done with magnetic torque so very small torques very small so these are the kind of controllers you want in such a scenario that you don't care when you stop 
you just want to stop okay so but of course like i said if you are if you are time critical application then yeah but then you you better have enough you can see the trade off right if you want fast you better have enough fuel or enough actuation ability okay because you are burning at this rate this is huge compared to this which is almost zero right so a lot of applications are there where you don't care about applying like you know huge torques just to stop a vehicle or something you're fine with stopping when it stops yeah the only thing is you still have to apply something in the at uh, in orbit because there is nothing else stopping it so then you're you can't do a mission right if you want earth pointing satellites then how will they point the earth if they don't stop okay so that's what is important all right okay so so i hope you understand that the universal formula though it gives the funny looking controls it is a very useful uh control design secondly more often than not we don't use the universal formula yeah we directly guess the controller from this kind of a lyapunov redesign so we start with the clf ideas right but then we design the control using you know just by guessing at this stage okay now one of the other things that you know you folks should also see is that actually i can keep control to be zero in this case then the system is still a stable system okay the purpose of designing controllers for such systems would be to uh, get a particular convergence rate okay so this system is already uh, asymptotically stable without any control yeah the purpose of the controller would be to get a rate particular rate of convergence go at a particular speed yeah all right so there is a nice exercise for you guys find a control lyapunov function and uh, apply the universal formula to get a control huh? this is the exercise all right any questions okay Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is dependent on the v. There is no uh, except for feedback linearization. There is no real method which gives you a control design without a v. Um, I mean, well, you have things like model predictive control and so on, where you. sort of guess a control out of a uh, optimization but um in those cases stabilization guarantees are not rigorous i mean there are guarantees but the guarantees are very conditional for stabilization yeah they work more on i would say intuition see it's more like i mean how would a typical predictive controller work is it would basically say that i will discretize the problem so i'll have say i i look at say 20 time step horizon so now i have a discrete problem right i have a discrete problem meanings meaning that i can put write this whole problem as a uh, if I, if my state space is say five fifth order five uh, states then i'll write this whole problem as a five state and 20 time steps so 100 so you know so 100 by 100 um, order matrix and i can pose an optimization problem right what will be my optimization requirement it would be like say fuel consumption is low so something like a u transpose u will be one and u transpose not u u u will also be the control at every stage every time step time step 1 time step 2 all the way to you know time step 20 okay so you put one piece of optimization cost as this a u squared or u transpose u the other piece could be you want the your states to shrink so you can put another cost as x transpose x where x is again the stat you know so it's like five states in 20 times so 100 this extra so now you have optimization problem so you solve this optimization problem and if the sol if solution is good then you know that Uh, if you keep applying this this yeah, this is a control sequence right you got a control sequence for 20 time steps if you apply this control sequence for 20 time steps you know that you will hopefully reduce the x terms x transpose x because that's what 
you pose as optimization problem. Uh, then you apply the first or two first two three steps of that control. Then you do the do it for the next horizon. You, this is the receding. That's what it said. It's the receding horizon. You switch the horizons. First horizon, second horizon. So you co compute for this horizon. Apply control only until this point. Then you compute for this horizon. Apply control here. This horizon. Apply control here. So you don't apply all the twenty steps of control. You apply only the first two or so. And so there is some proof <laughs> which which shows that yeah you will converge to the origin and all that. The proofs are very highly dependent on a lot of things. Yeah, they're actually dependent on uh, on uh, existence of a controller. <laughs> so it's very odd. Yeah. So so they are more optimization. I mean, and if you want to see such a setup, such a setup is way more useful if you want to put constraints on the states and things like that. Way more useful. Yeah. But if you are looking for stabilization type or, or you know tracking type results, then you rely on V. Have to rely on some V. Yeah. And again, it's also a nonlinear problem, right? Optimization, nonlinear optimization. So you don't know what comes out of it. Yeah. You put it into an engine, then what? You don't know. Hmm? Just like a lot of people also use learning algorithms these days, right? I mean, it's like I just uh, have a hammer and I keep hitting all my nails with it. Right. So you don't know that. If you learnt well enough or not, and if it will then perform well in given a particular set of data, so that's a little bit of an issue. But anyway, different context. In this context, we are looking at stabilizing controllers or tracking controllers. Hard to do it without a V. Yeah, very difficult to do it without a V. Absolutely, absolutely. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it means, but it sort of means that close to the equilibrium, you will have less control. Doesn't necessarily say that away from the equilibrium, what will happen? Close to the equilibrium, these controllers will guarantee that your control magnitude will be small. Yeah. Away from the equilibrium, no such guarantees. This is guaranteed. Yeah. It's a, that's not dependent on me. The small control property will hold. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So what I want to do is to uh, look at the proof. There's a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you will follow, but it's okay. There's a quick proof of why the controller is smooth. Okay. Uh, how we do this is by invoking the implicit function theorem. Okay. If you don't know what is the implicit function theorem, I'll just tell you in words. You can look it up later. It basically says that if you have a function of two variables or two or more variables, yeah. Actually, it's stated in two variables only. If you have a function f x y um, such that f x bar y bar is equal to zero, say, okay, and you also have df, uh, I think one of the partials, right? I would, I think it's the partial with respect, partial with respect to the y variable. This is uh, full rank, okay, or maximal rank. When I say full rank, it means partial of f with respect to y may be non square matrix i hope you understand that yeah f is not necessarily a scalar function could be a vector function okay the implicit function theorem can be stated for a vector function f is in general a vector valued function of two parameter two uh, you know variables x and y okay again different dimensions not necessarily scalars and if the partial of f with respect to the y bar or the y y variable is maximal rank yeah not full rank, maximal rank, then you can say that y bar in the neighborhood of, uh, so y can be written as a function of x uh, smoothly in a neighborhood of x bar y bar. Okay, 
basically you can it's it's that's why it's called the implicit function theorem this function is implicit but you can it is possible to write it in an explicit way okay you can give an explicit relationship okay lot of times that's not possible if i give you an implicit function of variables then you may not be able to write an explicit expression yeah in this case it says it is possible if the partial of the function with respect to the y variable is full rank then y can be written as a g of x a function of a smoothly also smoothly yeah okay all right and of course we started f with f smooth huh? we also started with f otherwise of course nothing is possible hmm? okay all right 